All right, we're live. All right, as folks come in, I'll welcome you again to another session of Live with LAFD. We're hoping we're gonna get through this one. No, we've had to, uh oh, let's listen. No, we're good. <laughs> We've had to uh, postpone several times just due to incidents and availability, so we're hoping to make it through this. Uh, a little while back, I, uh, by the way, I'm firefighter Margaret Stewart, and I asked what kind of topics uh, you were interested in learning about, and one of those was the battalion chiefs. And you see the, the red fire SUV and a bunch of white helmets at the back, but aren't really quite sure what's going on. And so that's what we're here to talk about today. So we're gonna be with Battalion Chief Avery and his emergency incident technician, Firefighter Murillo. So hope you're ready, get your questions, and we've got a, a good group of folks on, so I am gonna turn this around now, <laughs> and I'm gonna introduce you to Chief Avery here. So Chief, explain to us what it is that you are doing when you respond to an incident. What's the role of the Battalion Chief? Okay, yeah, good morning. So yeah, the battalion command team, our, our function is uh, all about strategy, uh, tracking, and uh, being aware of uh, where our resources are, our, our people, and what they're doing, and uh, prepared to assist them if they have a problem and to meet their needs um, tactically as the incident evolves. So an example would be a, a structure fire. So um, we get dispatched out of this office. We're in Fire Station 4 right now and uh, we get on the road and we're headed down to the incident address. My job is to start that uh, strategic plan and I do that with, uh, you know, I use um, Google Maps. I get a uh, look at the address as we're going on my iPad. Uh, I help navigate for my partner, Chris, and I'm taking notes for uh, uh, resource tracking uh, purposes as resources arrive on scene. And then when we arrive on scene, and if we're the first battalion uh, command team on scene, then we'll uh, assume command of the incident from the uh, captain that's on scene running the incident. And at that point, uh, we'll transition to the back of the command vehicle, and uh, my partner will start the process of tracking resources, the situation status, and um, uh, you know, resource status. And then uh, it's my job as the uh, incident commander to create a strategy for the successful mitigation of an incident. Uh, the folks that are on the fire engines and fire trucks, it's their job to implement the tactics, the actual tasks uh, required to, to put fires out or mitigate emergencies. So my job is to, again, create that strategy, communicate that, and then to organize the incident. So. Uh, we, you know, we use uh, incident command system terms and, and, a, and a structure, and I think, Margaret, you're going to do something on that later. Yeah, right? we're going to be coming to you guys soon with a whole live just on the incident command system, so you'll get to learn more about that. Right. So, so what we do, we use a, a structure that's known to everybody to organize incidents and to keep our people, you know, a proper span of control. So our folks are safe. They know what their job is. They're not duplicating effort, et cetera. So that's kind of our job. We're at the back of the sedan. I think you know, there's some questions about uh, you know, why the guys with the white hats stand at the back, uh, back of the uh, uh, pickup truck, the command vehicle. That's what we're doing back there. We're, we're creating strategy. We're tracking our resources. We're adjusting as needed and uh, supporting uh, the folks that are actually putting the fire out, their needs. Chief, can you explain, so we, talk, so we know if you're the first on scene, you're gonna take incident command. <clears throat> but let's say we have what we call a greater or a major emergency, and you're not the first BC on scene. What are the kind of roles that you could be filling? Right, so um, we could be uh, several functions that, that I could be, that we could be asked to fulfill. So it could be the incident safety officer, where we're, uh, you know, uh, uh, responsible for the overall safety of our people on scene. We, you know, we tour the, the incident and look for safety issues. Um, more commonly, we're gonna be assigned as a division supervisor. We could go to the roof and, and oversee the ventilation operation or to a division alpha or division one or two or you know, those kinds of things where we are in uh, charge of and overseeing multiple companies in a geographic area on that incident. And what are some of the the biggest <clears throat> challenges, if you're the incident commander and you're at a fire, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that like scare you? What, what goes wrong that is really difficult from your end? Because sometimes you can see the building and sometimes you can't, right? So you don't always have 
the, the best situational awareness and you rely on yeah. feedback. For sure. So, you know, that I think you just said it, Margaret, it's, it's about situational awareness. So I rely on our officers and our, you know, our division supervisors and our company commanders to relay pertinent information and to, you know, quote, paint a picture where I can support their needs and develop an, an adequate and safe strategy. Right. And, and the importance of accountability of your mm -hmm. resources. How does that like? Why is that important? What can happen and why is it important that you know where everyone is? Right. So, you know, again, a, a primary uh, responsibility of the battalion command team is to know where our people are and what they're doing. So that, as an example, God forbid we have a building collapse or a uh, extreme fire behavior uh, incident. Uh, you know, I, I think most folks are familiar with the Boyd Street incident that occurred here uh, three months ago. Um, so that we can actually get our people help, the right kind of help, uh, if they're in trouble, trapped, lost, injured, etc. Okay, we have a question from um, N53T2UA, because mm -hmm. we use different terminology than I think <coughs> any other department, asking what's the difference for us between a greater alarm structure fire and a major emergency structure fire? Right, so a greater alarm fire is any incident where the incident commander requests additional resources, so that would be considered a greater alarm. Um, a major emergency is any incident where we have 15 or more fire companies operating at the incident. Okay. And for a lot of other <coughs> departments, they use terms like first alarm, second alarm, right. third alarm, so we're a bit different there. Right. All right, and um, we all, I also happen to know that you just returned from a deployment as a strike team commander. Mm -hmm. um, can you just briefly talk about, like, because that's a different kind of a role, right. what you do as part of a strike team when we deploy somewhere? You bet. So wildland incidents, um, uh, strike teams are the common configuration. So that's five engine companies and a strike team leader, which is a battalion chief. Uh, the battalion chief is uh, on a strike team is uh, responsible for the um, overall safety, of course, uh, the logistical needs, but more importantly, uh, the uh, tactical um, operation of that strike team. So the strike team leader works for a division uh, supervisor. The division supervisor uh, gives an assignment to the strike team leader. The strike team leader um, relays that to the strike team and then supervises and oversees, make sure that that, that job's getting done. Excellent, mm -hmm. okay. And now the other half of the, your command team is something, a role that not all fire departments have. Right. So we're fortunate to have this. Can you <coughs> briefly explain who that is and then we'll introduce him? Yeah, of course. So my partner is uh, firefighter Chris Murillo. Uh, he's a 20 year veteran, uh, excellent firefighter, and uh, uh, obviously a very valuable part of, the, of our command team. Um, his job is number one to take care of me mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> keep me going the right way. Uh, but uh, more importantly, he, he has lots of administrative duties, as do I. But on the on the emergency side of things, he is primarily responsible for number one, getting us there safely, positioning the apparatus to our best advantage so we have a view or not, um, and then tracking resources. He also is responsible for um, at least two radio channels and all of that communication. Uh, and then again, taking care of me. He's another set of eyes and ears. He's a tenured veteran firefighter. He knows what he's looking at, what he's hearing. And so I rely on him extensively for his input. You know, routinely he'll, he'll tap me on the arm or shoulder and say, hey chief, did you see the X, Y, Z? And, and you know, obviously a big help. So we're a team is what Excellent. it boils down to. All right, we're gonna let you switch over the mics. Okay. And I'll just let you guys know that once we talk to Chris Murillo, he's going to explain his role. We're going to take you onto the apparatus floor and give you a tour of their command vehicle. So stay tuned for that tour. Uh, that's coming up after this interview. All right. Good morning, Chris. Good Can morning. you just, uh, Chief gave us a, a bit of an overview as to your role. Can you talk us through, like the Chief did, responding into a structure fire from, from the minute you hear the tones? What, what's your role? How do you play in? Uh, as the Chief said, you know, I'm part of his command team, and um, what I do is I drive the command vehicle. Uh, when we do get a structure fire, I try to get us going in the right direction, and um, as we're going, the Chief is tracking companies. Uh, 
I'm making sure that I'm getting us there in a safe manner. Uh, he is also guiding me in looking up on uh, the different maps that we might have um, on our computers and stuff like that. So he plays a real big part in uh, getting me to where I'm going. Um, he's also my eyes and ears. He's jotting down information, uh, the companies that are already on scene and what they see. So once we get there, uh, once we get on scene, uh, we use that information to start formulating um, our uh, sheet, which is in the back of the rig of where companies are, resources that we might need, uh, or additional, um, uh, let's say, companies like Department of Water and Power, uh, things like that. So that, that's a big asset once we get there on scene. And then once you, and we're, you're going to show us how you, you kind of open up the command vehicle and get yourself set up. Uh, what are you then transitioning to once once you're on scene and in, and he's in command of the incident? What's your once, role? Once we get there on scene, I'll transition to the back of the rig where we have a uh, a big um, map basically or a big sheet of paper where we can start jotting down uh, company placement um, where they're at uh, in conjunction to the uh, building. Um, let's say if we have a one-story commercial where uh, those companies are going to be. Uh, also, we are jotting down times as far as uh, how long companies have been in the building, whether they might need relief, um, and the progress of the fire. So once we make the transition to the back of the rig, it's uh, really important to uh, have very complete and thorough information uh, just in case you need to know where everybody is. Uh, to assist them, whether they need uh, additional companies back there to help them, or maybe you might need to swap them out because they've been there uh, for a while and are fatigued. So um, when we transition to the back of the rig, it's really important to have very thorough and complete notes. All right, excellent. And what's one of the, we talked about briefly how you're gonna try to position the rig to get the best view. What does that entail? Like, what are you looking for? What do you have to be careful of um, when you're placing, when you're taking your spot? That's a very good question. Um, placement of the rig is extremely important um, because in Hollywood, you can get a lot of uh, one-way streets. You can uh, respond to up in the hills where, uh, it's very tight and narrow streets and you don't have a lot of opportunities to uh, place yourself in a good spot. Um, placing yourself in a good spot allows you to get more situational awareness of what's going on with your incident. Uh, if you put yourself down the block, that's uh, unfortunately sometimes that happens and it reduces your situational awareness. So putting yourself in a good spot allows you just to get more uh, information and um, be more complete on uh, your tracking of resources and stuff like that and also what the incident is doing because you actually have your eyes on your uh, objective. Right. All right. Well, let's transition to the apparatus and we'll do a little tour. So as Sounds we're talking, great. if anybody has any, or as, sorry, as we're walking, if anybody has any questions, let me switch you around here so I don't fall over something in the fire station. Uh, if you have any questions, we did have one asking about the helmet colors. So in our department currently, um, our battalion chiefs have white helmets and our firefighters have yellow helmets. Uh, they'll also have what we call passport IDs. There's numbers on the side, so you'll see um, that it'll, for them it'll say BC1, it'll say battalion one, so people know where, what unit they're assigned to. All right, I'm gonna turn this around to Chris. And why don't we just start at the front, at your front. side? Okay, we'll go on my side. And then we'll work our way around. Watch yourself. So this is, you see, this is one of the newer um, battalion. What, do you know what year this is? Uh, this is a 16, I believe. Okay, 2016. 20, yeah, so we 2016. used to, you'll, you'll see some older rigs, um, but these newer Ram trucks. So if you go ahead and you look on the inside uh, of our command vehicle, you notice that we have quite a few radios there. Um, we run with a lot of different companies and a lot of different departments. With all those radios, we're allowed to uh, we're able to communicate with them. Uh, we have a PD radio. Uh, we have uh, uh, several different radios where we can communicate with the Forest Service, LA County, uh, other departments that uh, 
surround our area and communication is very important to us. Okay. We'll move. I don't know if you want to look at any of this side. Yeah, we'll just we'll come around. We'll we'll hit the big the big piece which is the okay. back of the rig. Now, so earlier we talked about coming to the back of the rig and the back of the rig as you can see has quite a lot of radios also. Um, a screen right here. You can hear all the radios turning on. Allows us to get the information of the incident. It has the address, the companies, and any additional companies uh, that, might, that we might request. Uh, we also do have an iPad back here, which helps us. Um, we can pull up maps on our uh, iPad and it'll give us a, um, a good picture of the area that we're in, whether it's a structure, whether it's a brush fire. Uh, so it definitely assists us in getting more uh, situational awareness. Um, as you can see, we've got quite a lot of radios here. We've got our, our radios that we uh, will t turn to the TAC channel so we can communicate with companies, the radios that we can communicate with just the uh, supervisors. And I just want to point out that these uh -huh. are labeled. Everyone can see command. So yeah. there's no confusion um, on what what everything is. It's all, that's, that's the fire department way. Keep things Correct. organized and titled. Absolutely. We have uh, radios just for uh, mayday situations if somebody needs help. Uh, that radio is dedicated just to emergency only. And we'll and just do, while, while we have that chance, we'll do a quick, can you, I'm just gonna have you, can you show um, our folks what happens when we have a firefighter emergency, um, the button that we push and how that. So if we have a firefighter emergency, we're gonna go ahead and press this big orange <coughs> button. And that's gonna go off on everybody's radio, uh, letting them know that we do have a firefighter emergency. Uh, and we do, in this uh, radio back here, we're also, light up and let us know that we do have a, um, a firefighter emergency. Right. And the important thing being like, that's the only traffic that's coming through on that radio head. So it doesn't get confused. Correct. Like, so you can hear it very clearly because that's Correct. obviously the priority then. Absolutely. Okay. That so let's carry the on. Priority of the incident. Yep. Uh, and like I said, we do have radios just uh, specifically to talk to uh, dispatch. So we've got a lot of uh, radios that we need to monitor. And it gets pretty noisy at the back of these rigs, let yes, alone the does. noise from the incident. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, just picture yourself in your own vehicle listening to one radio station. <laughs> Try to listen to all these radios. It yeah. makes it very difficult. So yeah. that's why uh, me and the chief will split up half of the sedan. He listens to the right side of the radios and I'll listen to the left side of the radios. And, and so can you clarify who's talking on what channels? What, um, how do you divide the responsibility of communications? You're outgoing, like you to dispatch. Oh, so him. so um, any communication will be done by the chief on the right side of the radio. He'll have the TAC channel, the command channel. I'll usually talk to um, dispatch or um, our division TAC. Cool. Those are my responsibilities. Um, earlier, we talked about uh, resource tracking, and keeping track of your company. Um, this is a sheet that we will use for it. We call it our 666, and this is our tracking sheet uh, to keep track of companies. In this area here, we can draw anything we need to on here. If it's a picture of a building, if it's a picture of a mountainside, so it'll assist us in uh, keeping track of our companies. On this side here, we'll jot down all the companies that are on scene that are assigned to this incident. So for example, they would see like 41, you know, all of our numbered companies here. Correct. That they have arrived. Sure. And then what, what job, so if they're and second their floor fire is. attack yes, or roof absolutely. ops, something like that. Yeah. And then if they've gone available, you, yeah. So I just want to specify to folks, the company, that's where you're going to see the number and then you're going to see where they physically are on the incident. Correct. And if the incident is uh, growing, we'll go ahead and ask for additional resources. And once those companies arrive, we will put them into staging. And on this side of the sheet here, I'll write down the companies that are in staging and available. Uh, so once we have an assignment for them, we can go ahead and give them that assignment and mark them off of staging and know that they're not available anymore. 
and then as an incident grows and you have divisions, then you can you can move out. Correct. Into on this, this side of the now. sheet, we're going to go ahead and mark companies once they're uh, in their divisions. Uh, we'll mark down whether they're in Alpha, Bravo, Charlie on the first floor, second floor, third floor, and what companies are in that area. And I'd also like to uh, emphasize, for because we get questions about this, that our shops, they custom outfit. Correct. This whole rig. It doesn't come to us like this. No, no, <laughs> that would be great if it did. <laughs> but no, they have to uh, send this out to get it um, customly done, and they've done a fabulous job. Yeah. So what other, what other goodies do you have in oh, here? What other compartments? other goodies. <laughs> so in the other compartments, we have supplies uh, for the firefighters. Uh, which is work gloves in here. Which is like you guys become a mobile supply shop. Correct. Because if they, if they lose their gloves in an incident or you come correct. by, then you guys can provide them that immediate need. Yes, that's correct. We've got to be able to supply them with their safety equipment if, if it's damaged or lost. Uh, also in this drawer right here, we do have more. We have structure gloves in here. We have an additional microphone. These things do go bad sometimes, so we have to be able to, to uh, change them out and put them back in service. Excellent. And if you ever wondered, do we ever go inside of uh, fires? Absolutely. Uh, the chief mentioned earlier, uh, sometimes we get assigned a division or sometimes we get uh, assigned safety. So we are actually having to go inside in the IDLH, Immediate Dangers of Life and Health, and we do have to put on breathers once in a while. Now our breathers are kept back here in a compartment in this slide out tray. They can fit uh, great in here. They stay out of the way and we still have plenty of room to work. Which is uh, nice because in the old rigs, they used to be in the back correct, seat. <laughs> correct, <laughs> Pretty correct. Correct. So if you're wondering if we ever have to put on breathers and go inside, we absolutely do. And here's where we keep them in this nice little compartment in the rear. Excellent. Um, is there anything else you can think of that's... I think we've covered most of it, yeah? All right. Well, I want to say thank you for your time. We Absolutely. appreciate you sharing with everyone what what the battalion command does. So, Absolutely. <clears throat> excuse me. Now, if they see us on scene or you see pictures and a bunch of white helmets and a yellow helmet at the back of a rig, um, you have a better understanding of what they're looking at, what they're doing, and why it's so important. So, with that, I'm going to say safe safe day to everyone we appreciate i'm seeing all these greetings from all over the world um chile i know italy sweden france uh, so thank you for joining us we hope you found that interesting and informative and if you have any questions i'll be posting this to our story so it'll be there you can dm us let us know and we hope we, next week i think it is we'll be confirming that to bring you Another one specifically on the incident command system. So the terminology, how it's used, how it's structured, which ties in with what you saw here. So have a safe day, everyone. Bye.